Well, that definitely was a trilogy in one movie. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for Rise of Skywalker, the final film in the Disney Star Wars trilogy, and there's a lot to unload. There's a lot in this movie. Whether you were a fan of The Last Jedi or not, it is undeniable that Johnson essentially had no means of building up the next film. The only parts you could say is that Kylo Ren was still there, even though he'd been beaten by Rey several times, and the Resistance had essentially no people. Those are the only points you had. They killed Snooki, they killed Phasma, they killed off everyone who was major in the hierarchy, aside from Kylo and Hux, who's just Igor. This film, JJ is essentially trying to reset that. He creates a trilogy in this movie. He essentially sets up a finale that was never set up in the last film. He has to build up to it. He has to execute it. And he has to pull it off while trying to not make it six hours long. It's two hours and about 30 minutes, but holy shit, it is stuffed. It is stuffed to the freaking brim. This is jumping back and forth between all the characters. There is no moment where the film takes a chance to breathe. For example, in the first film where we had Rey be introduced through her character, through visual storytelling, we saw that she was a fighter, we saw that she was a scavenger, we saw that she had good heart, we saw that she was still waiting for her parents to return. None of that is in this with anyone. If you get a inkling of character development, it is there and gone in the blink of an eye. The arcs are essentially repeated from the last two films. There are elements that are completely forgotten about in The Last Jedi. For instance, that weird Rose and Finn relationship that completely came out of nowhere, it's gone. They have a throwaway line for how Holo's sacrifice, you know, can't be repeated again. The one part though that they do keep and they build on, aside from everything else being exposition and just dumping into this film, was the connection between Rey and Kylo. You know how they were able to have those moments where they were able to connect with each other? They take that and then they build on that even more, and I enjoy it. I actually really enjoyed those parts. Those were my favorite moments of the movie because it escalates. It's more than just feeling water on the hands. They, they have fights almost in this sort of realm between their minds. And this all revolves around the Emperor coming back. And oh my God, guys, this shit's so forced. JJ and Kathleen Kennedy can try and bullshit us all they want. This was not in the plan. This was not in the playbook, but it's here because they have no villain to use. They have no means to give a big be-all, end-all. I thought they had used all the elements from Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi in The Last Jedi, but nope, they found a way to repeat Return of the Jedi shit. Literally, there's parts that are full-on repeats of Return of the Jedi in this movie, again. But the thing that's kind of crazy about this, it is, it's not bad it's not horrible there's a lot happening though you're gonna feel completely exhausted there are elements with characters like i said peppered in here and there but sometimes they are either nonsensical there's elements that happen later on that completely mitigate everything that happened or there's parts that just shouldn't be there they should have just chop some stuff. I know that JJ had to try and establish a finale for this movie, but there is some stuff that he even could have cut out. Carrie Russell's character, the one that bounty hunter with a helmet that they kept on talking about, didn't need to be in this movie, completely pointless. And I actually didn't mind it more so for the first, I would say, first half of the film. I didn't mind it. It was a lot. It was kind of aggravating how much I was having to deal with. I wasn't off the fence about it. And then it's after Kylo and Rey have a fight for like the upteenth time. There was a part in the movie where I looked over at my roommate with, you know, that face. Really? And it was after that point that the movie just goes bananas. You know the expression jumping the shark? How about jumping the fucking galaxy? This movie keeps on adding more crazy stupid shit into it and it just piles it and piles it to the ending where i was laughing more than i probably should have been there was all these really big serious build-up points that they were trying to 
make like big and serious, but I was just laughing my ass off because of how stupid they were. There's a lot of fan service shoved in this movie to try and save face. They did the best they could with Carrie Fisher. I understood the circumstances that they were in. They were really in a bind and they kind of do the best they can. There is some awkward elements with that, but that's because these are actors who are trying to redo scenes with a actress who is no longer with them and that must have been very awkward and uncomfortable a lot in that filming process either way though i know that i'm not on the wrong again with my thoughts because when the movie ended not a clap not even a woo everyone is just exhausted there might be some people who are still big super star wars fans and give you guys all the credit but i'm exhausted i am done with star wars i even stopped watching the mandalorian i'm just done i'm just exhausted with this Disney needs to take a step back and they just need to let this breathe and they need to rethink their strategy with this all. In the end, The Rise of Skywalker is kind of like a whimper, even though it's trying to be a big bang gunshot to try and finish this whole trilogy. They should have just had a plan. They should have had a goddamn plan. Rise of Skywalker gets a three out of seven. That's the same number I gave The Last Jedi, but admittedly, The Last Jedi has some really great points but it also has just some brain dead stupid shit in it. This movie is just middle of the road, but it, it's just so over convoluted. It's jumping the shark, it's ridiculousness. It's attempt to try and save face just kind of lowers it to that point. I'd rather watch The Last Jedi than this movie, but this movie is still better than The Phantom Menace and The Attack of the Clones. You can, you can take that. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Please tell me what you guys think of this movie. I didn't hate it. I kind of enjoyed parts of it, but I'm just kind of more so glad it's over. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.